Hello and welcome, I'm Adam with Push the Envelope, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. This week we're going to be focusing on the Unity gaming development platform. Now if you've never heard of Unity before, it's this awesome tool that allows you to create 2D and 3D gaming environments and allows you to add different tasks to be done, dynamic environments, and a whole bunch of cool complex environments based in physics. Now. Traditionally, it's used for gaming development, but there is this package called ML Agents that you can use. And ML Agents allows you to train reinforcement or imitation learning models in order to dynamically work around these environments and allow the computer to learn how to complete different tasks and how to navigate this complex environment. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to create some simple tools and we're going to uh, work up in complexity to allow the computer to learn more and more dynamic things. So without further ado, let's jump over to Unity and I'll show you how to get started. Okay, first thing you need to do is, as you can see here, I'm on the Unity homepage. So go ahead and go to unity.com and download the application. Once you have downloaded Unity, you can go ahead and launch it and you'll come up with a screen like this. Go to new project. We are gonna use a 3D core. And on the right hand side here, you can rename your project. I'm going to keep it as my project. I'm just going to remove the space though. The location, uh, navigate to wherever you want to save it. I'm already here. So I'm just going to select this folder and create project. Now, uh, since it's the first time you're creating it, it has to add all the different packages and stuff. So this may take a while, but while that's loading, we can go ahead and launch a new command prompt window. And you just need to navigate to wherever that folder is. So if you're using Windows, you can do a CD and then just move to wherever that is. Okay, I'm already here. So I'm within that new project, that folder that we just created. While I'm in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to make a virtual environment. If you've never done this before, you just need to do a Python or uh, depending on how you downloaded it, you just may need to do a py um, dash m Try both. Try Python and try PY if you're getting an error on Python. Dash M, we're going to go VNV. So we're using the VNV module and we're going to create a new folder called VMV for that virtual environment. And you can launch that as well. This may take a second, but what we're doing, again, if you've never used a virtual environment, it allows you to uh, manage all your packages in this little sandbox of an environment so you don't have to mess up your other packages for. Um, other things that you're trying to install. Now, since we have created the virtual environment, you can do VNV slash scripts slash activate. This is going to actually activate the virtual environment. Once we're in there, we can start uh, downloading some packages. But before we do that, I do want to make sure that I'm using the latest version of pip. So I'm going to do a pi dot or dash m pip install dash dash upgrade pip. So this is just going to upgrade pip if there's a new version out there. This one should not take very long, so we can just sit here and wait for it. Once this is done, the next package that we're gonna be downloading is PyTorch. So do a pip install torch. I'm going to use torch 1.10.2 just because that's what I made this demo for and I want it to be um, relevant for the future. If there's an upgrade, it's possible things will break with this uh, once it is updated. So just keep that in mind. This one probably will take a few seconds to upload. So as you can see in the background here, um, Unity has loaded a new environment. It's a blank environment right now. And um, just navigation things, you can scroll in and out for zooming. If you hold Alt, you can uh, move around uh, the environment as well. Down here, you have this main camera, and that's gonna show you which way the camera is facing. So you can see it's facing the uh, side of the blue arrow. And so I'm just going to orient myself here. Every time you run the environment, it's going to use this main, the view of the main camera to load how you're viewing it. So you can actually move this up a little. And on the right hand side, there's these transforms. You can do a rotate. So I'm just going to rotate the X by 50. And that's just going to look down at the thing that we're about to make. And you'll see that in a second once I actually have something on here. Okay, 
Uh, let me just check and torch has downloaded. So next one we're going to do is pip install and we're going to do ML agents. I believe this is also a fairly big package, so this may take a second to load. Okay, while that's working again, back to unity. Let's go ahead and just create our first thing in here. So on the bottom left, you're going to see this little plus sign and we can create a 3D object. Let's create a cube. Now in this environment, you can see our cubes right here. You can move around, you can zoom in on it, whatever. But when you click on it, you have all these different arrows. If you grab the arrow, it'll move along that axis and allow you to move it around. Or again, on that right hand side under transform, we can adjust the position. So I'm going to center this around X equals zero, Z equals zero. And the cube is one by one by one. So it centers the Y axis in the middle of the cube. I would like the top of the cube to be zero because this is going to be our platform. So it's going to be a negative 0.5 to get us there. On the bottom right, I'm going to actually just rename this right now to platform before I forget. That way we can keep track of which ones are which. Rotate, obviously rotates whatever axis, but scale is what we're going to look at next. And I'm just going to make this 10 in the X direction and 5 in the Z so that we get this little rectangle right here. Okay, last thing I'm going to do with the platform is I do want to change the color of it. So under the projects tab in the middle, assets, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this materials because we're going to be housing all of our materials in this. In that materials folder, right click, create a new material right here. I'm going to call this platform. And here's where we can change the color of the material. So click the little dropper, double click inside of there. I'm going to make this uh, gray. And once you do that, you can click on the platform that we just created under mesh render materials. There's going to be this default material, but if you just drag and drop that new material right into there, it will change the color of our platform. Okay, so that is the first thing that is done. Next, we are going to create another object and that is going to be another cube. We can move this to one side of the platform. I'll choose this side. So let's go ahead and do this around X equals negative 2.5, Y equals 0.5, because I want this to be the bottom of it as zero. So it's right on top of the platform and the Z is going to be equal to zero. Again, in this materials folder, I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to call this one agent because that's what this block is going to be. At the same time, let me go ahead before I forget, before I forget and change cube to be agent. Now the agent color, uh, I'm going to choose to do blue. Uh, let me do a light blue just so it's a little easier to see. Click on that cube that we just created. Again, under mesh renderer materials, drop that one in there and voila, our agent is now blue. Last thing we need to add, 3D object uh, sphere. I'm going to change the sphere's name to goal. This is what we're ultimately trying to get the agent to go capture. I'm just going to move it up a little bit, but the end position is going to be 2.5. The Y is going to be 0.5 and the Z is going to be zero. Create one more material. This material is going to be called goal. Going to change it to, let's make this one yellow click on that goal and drag and drop that material in there. Okay, so now we have this little environment. What we're ultimately trying to do is our blue agent here. We want that to move around and just run to the goal every time um, in order to get its reward. I'm going to take a quick second, run back to the command line. Last thing we need to install, so pip install tensor board. And that's going to help us monitor the progress. And that one downloaded fairly quick, so should be good there. I'm just going to clear the screen, and for now, we can minimize that. Okay, so now we have these things in the environment. Let's go ahead and click on the platform. Um, this is, for the most part, set. I'm going to close some of these. 
The only thing we need to add is I do want to make this a rigid body. But I don't want to use gravity on this one. Uh, because I don't want it to just fall into free space. I want it to be the ground. Uh, and so that'll be good for that one. And let's go ahead and click on the goal. We are going to add a rigid body. Um, I'm also not going to use gravity in this one because there is a bug where it'll fall through the platform. So don't use gravity on this one as well. And, but that one should be fine. The one thing that we do need to do for the goal is under sphere collider, we need to say this one is a trigger because I do want to know whenever the agent hits the goal so that we know when to end the simulation or at least reset it. So make sure is trigger is uh, clicked. And that would be good for that. And the last thing is the agent. Now the agent does need a lot of things associated with it. So add component, we will make this one a rigid body. You can keep this one as using gravity. Um, if you clear that out. In this list, we can find ML agents once it's downloaded. So go to window on the very top, package manager. Just to show you all the packages that you can download. And in this view, this is these are all the ones that are downloaded. So if you go and click on here and change it to Unity Registry, you can see all the ones you can download. Down here, there is ML Agents. Click See Other Versions. These are all the stable versions that you can download. I'm going to create the or use the latest, so 2.0.1. Go ahead and install that. Now you can use experimental packages or packages that are still in development. To do that, click this little cog on the top, go into settings, go into advanced settings, and uh, it will allow you to click to use the experimental content. Now the thing with that is you'll have uh, new features potentially, but the, those packages are being changed. So it's possible that your code may not work uh, the same way as they're constantly updating the packages. Um, I'm going to use 2.0.1 just because it is the most stable one right now for me. Also, if you're using an older package, so one point whatever, some of the things I do here may not work for you. So you need to go check out the documentation if you're running into some problems and you're not using the same versions. Okay, this seems to have completed. So now if I click on the agent, add component, ML agents is right here. We can run into there. Now we need the behavior parameters. Just gonna close that for a second. We're going to need in the same thing, the decision requester. And we are going to need, uh, that should be it for this one actually. Okay, so in behavior parameters, I'm going to call this one move agent. Okay space size now this is your input vector so you need to know how many inputs you're going to be giving this to start off with i am going to give the agent its own position so this space size is going to be three and the reason it's going to be three is because it's going to be passing location as x y and z so three components of location Stacked vectors, this means um, if you use a one, it just means what is the current position. But if you up this to 20, uh, this will give the current position along with the last 19 positions. So you can see a uh, time series of where it was moving over time. I'm just gonna keep it as one uh, because we don't really need this time series part of it. Now we get into actions. So actions are what are the outputs of the agent? I'm going to do two continuous values and no discrete values. Continuous is going to give you a value from negative one to one and everything in between. Discrete is obviously going to give you a negative one or zero or one. Um, and I'm just using continuous because the agent can move slightly, uh, you know, a little bit in the X, but a lot in the Z if it wants to, right? So, um, but you can do the same thing with discrete and just moving in discrete uh, blocks. Okay, the model, we don't have a model right now, but we'll go back to that one once we have one. Behavior for now, um, just keep it at default and that will work for the behavior parameters. Decision requester, uh, we will get back to that. Um, but this is just, 
it's looking for the inputs, right? So it's the period is five. Um, so you can up that, lower that, however often you want this thing to uh, get inputs from the environment. And this script we will get rid of and replace with one of our other scripts. So you don't have to worry about that for now. Okay, within assets, um, so go ahead and click that. We're gonna create a new folder. This one is gonna be called scripts. Go into the scripts folder. We're going to create a new C sharp script. We're gonna call it move agent. And this is the one we're really gonna be working on. Now I'm gonna create, uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, but go ahead, I am going to be using Visual Studios to edit these scripts. And you can go ahead and download that if you don't have it already, or you can use some other editor. Uh, but this is what it's gonna pop up with. It just gives you a default shell to start using. Uh, I'm actually just going to get rid of everything within this first block here. And we are going to replace mono behavior with agent. Okay, so this is just a, the, the shell that we're gonna be using. We do need to import some more uh, tools to use. So using ML agents, uh, sorry, this is going to be unity.mlagents. So get that package in here. And we're just gonna import some other modules from ML agents. So unity.mlagents.actuators and using unity.mlagents.sensors. So sensors and actuators are what we're gonna be using within here and we'll get to them once I actually write the code. All right, right off the bat, first thing we need to do is when the environment is loaded, we need to make sure everything is in the right area. So make sure our agent is set up to be where we put him um, at the beginning. So we can do that using public override void initialize. So initialize is going to be setting everything up as soon as we hit play. To change the position of the agent, it's going to be called transform. And then we're gonna do dot local position. Now you can do the global position if you want. The thing I'll caution with is if you move the environment around so that it's no longer centered around zero, zero or whatever you had it, um, it's going to globally go to zero, zero rather than locally. So if you copy the environment or you move the environment around, local position is gonna keep that. Um, relative to wherever the environment is. Okay, so the local position for the transform is going to be equal to a new vector three. So a three dimensional vector. We are going to, if I go back to the environment here, this position, if I open transform, was at negative 2.5, 0.50. So let me pass that in. So negative 2.5, 0. And so that is going to just make sure that once it starts, the agent is always at that position. All right, I'm gonna copy everything I just did here for initialize. I'm gonna paste it right below it. And I'm going to replace, I spelled initialize wrong, so make sure that you correct that. But I'm going to replace the second one with on, episode begin. So once the episode begins, so anytime the environment is reset, we reach the goal and it reset, it fell off the platform and it reset, uh, or we ran out of time or whatever it is, it's going to do this action right here. And, and I want it for this case to be pretty much the same exact thing as initialize. So just set the uh, agent to that same position to reset it. Okay, to start with, I'm not going to worry about the computer controlling this. I want to control it with the keys to make sure that everything is working correctly um, and, and it's working how I expect it to before we start training it. So I'm gonna do another public override void heuristic. <clears throat> heuristic is um, like uh, you can give it inputs from the keyboard. So it's going to be in action buffers, 
actions out. If you're using a different version of ML agents, these, uh, especially for heuristics and some of the other ones we're doing at the bottom, these may not be the same for you. So if you're using a different version, you need to check out the documentation if it's not working to see what the actual um, input should be here. But I'm assuming you're gonna be using the same one, so I'm just gonna move on. So we are going to say uh, action segment is going to be a float. Okay, now we're gonna define continuous actions, which is going to be equal to actions out dot continuous actions. All right, why am I using continuous actions? If you remember back over here, when I have the agent, uh, we had those two continuous actions. So we want to keep those the same. Okay, going back to my script. Okay, we have those continuous actions. Now we have continuous, continuous actions. Um, here's where we need to define the movement in the uh, X and Z axis. So continuous actions at zero is going to be equal to, so the first input is going to, or output is gonna be equal to input dot get axis raw. And this one is going to be the vertical. Let me make that. Okay, um, it's going to be equal to vertical. So it's going to be the up and down keys. We're going to copy that. Change this to a one and we're going to be passing the second value as the horizontal axis so the left and right keys. Okay, so that gives us the initialization, the heuristic. And so now we have the inputs from the keyboard and we need to do something with those inputs. That is gonna use another function, public override void. And this one is gonna be on actions received. We're gonna be passing it action buffers, uh, actions. Okay, so whenever an action is received, here's what we're gonna do with it. Now again, the inputs are, or the, the things we're trying to change are the X and the Z axis, wherever the position is for X and Z axis. So we're gonna define a new floating point, which is gonna be how much we're moving in the X axis. And that's gonna be equal to the actions that are taken. So actions.continuous actions. And so the X is going to be moving left and right. So this is going to be continuous actions at one because we set the horizontal axis to one up here. If I copy this and I put this right after it, we're gonna change it to the move Z and that's just gonna be equal to the first element. So the position zero. Okay, so now we got our inputs. Now we need to update the position of the actual agent itself. First thing I need to know is how fast do I want the agent to move? And I'm just gonna do a default of three. If we need it to go faster or slower after we see this, we can come back and change it. And lastly is updating that position. So transform dot local position. Again, transform is going to be referring to our agent. So the local position, we're going to be adding a new vector to it. So new vector, three we're going to be passing in the how much we want to move in the x the y is not going to change so we can put that as a zero and how much we want to move in the z we are going to be multiplying that by um, our time frequency right so time dot delta time and then we're also going to be multiplying that by how fast we want to move uh, which is why it's important to set that up top Okay, so 
again, we initialize the game at the very beginning. Every time it resets, we are reinitializing it. We have heuristics from the keyboard, and then we're taking those heuristics and we're doing something with it by updating the position. Let me save this. I'm gonna go back to Unity and it's gonna load in and it will tell me if I have any problems, which I do. So uh, I imported one of the modules wrong. This one should be a capital L. All right, on the bottom, on actions received, this should be on action singular. It's loading, okay. So we do have this error done here, object reference not set to an instance of the object. That is because we have not uh, put our script with the agent. So there is this agent script right here, but we want this move agent script to be associated with it. So go ahead and just drag that over. And I'm going to delete this agent script. You can go ahead and remove component. Now under the uh, move agent script that we just created, we need to do whatever the max step is. So I'm gonna do a thousand. What this is doing is after a thousand steps, if it still hasn't completed the episode, hasn't reached the uh, reward, then you need to reset. Um, this will stop it from getting stuck or from optimizing bad behaviors or whatever the case may be, or maybe it's just taking too long to reach the goal. It'll just reset and try again. Um, so a thousand, we'll put that for now. If we need to uh, increase that, then maybe we'll come back to it. Okay. Now, let's see if we can go ahead and run it. So hit that play up top. Okay, um, on the platform, you can see it fell over. So I'm just actually going to remove the rigid body. So remove component and hopefully that will stay. Go ahead and hit play again. Okay, we do need to update our camera, but you can see, um, let me see if I can move the camera around, I can't. Uh, so before I do this, uh, click the camera on the bottom and just make sure that the whole platform is in the view right here on the bottom right. Hit play. Okay. As you can see, we can move around with the keyboard and we can hit the object. Now, the thing is we can hit the object, but we haven't taught it that it should be resetting. Also, if I fall off the platform, I just keep falling and nothing tells it to reset. So we need to add in both of those things. First, what we can do is add a new 3D object. This is going to be another cube. And this is going to be something that's under the platform. So if it falls off, it hits it and we can say, hey, you fell off the platform, you need to reset. So position is going to be centered around zero, zero. I'm going to make the Y negative 2.5 just to keep it under the platform. And I'm going to change the scale to be 15 in the X and five in the Z. Uh, let's go 10 in the Z actually. If I move this around, you can see that just surrounds the platform and it will fall on top of that. I'm going to go assets, materials. I'm going to create a new material. Uh, let's go ahead and make this just red. And we'll call this boundary. Go ahead and click that under mesh render materials, drag in that new material. Now under this material, instead of opaque, I'm going to make it transparent just to make it a little easier to see, uh, not as distracting. And then I also need to rename that cube to be boundary. Okay, clicking on that boundary, let me close some other things, box collider. I do need to say, hey, this is a trigger. 
And now we need to distinguish between which one um, is, is it triggering off of. So under the scripts folder that we created in assets, create a new C sharp script. I'm gonna call one of them boundary. I'm gonna create another one and I'm going to call it goal. Okay, click on the red boundary and move that boundary script into uh, those attributes and then do the same thing for the goal. So move the goal script into the goal. And I'll show you what that is going to do in one second. To make sure, let me just see if we have everything set and we do, okay. So going over um, to our script again, we have the heuristic set, um, but we want to, uh, you know, action received, we can move, but we wanna know whenever we run into something, whether that be the object or whether that be the boundary that we just created. So to do that, we need to do a private, void this is on trigger enter so this is the logic for hey we just had a trigger do something with it uh we're gonna pass in collider other now we need to say we need to figure out did we hit the trigger on the goal or did we hit the trigger on the boundary because one of them is going to be a reward and one of them is going to be a punishment so we need to do an if statement so if other dot try get component, if it's the goal component, now what this is saying is try to get the component called goal. And now when you go over here and you click on the goal, it's gonna be looking for that script that we just called goal. Um, same thing for the boundary. The boundary has a script now called boundary. So that is what it's going to be looking for is if it has something called goal. Um, the out is going to be goal, goal. So you can just do out goal, goal. Okay, so if it is the goal that we hit, we can set the reward to uh, one. So it gets the reward of one if it hit the goal. Um, and then once it hits the goal, you need to end the episode. So end episode and what end episode does episode is it moves back to on episode begin so it starts a new episode resets and then it does it again if i copy this entire thing right here paste it below now instead of getting the goal component i want boundary so look to see if the boundary was hit And instead of giving it a one, I want to give it a negative one. Say, hey, you fell off the platform. You need to, uh, you get punished and you reset. Okay. Load that in. And go ahead and hit play just to make sure this will reset. Okay, so moving around, we hit the goal and it resets to the beginning. Perfect. If we fall off the platform, it also resets. So we should be good to go. One other thing that's interesting is um, it may be hard to see whether it hit the boundary or it did something bad. So one thing you can do is you can change the color of the floor um, based on if it succeeded or not. So if I go back to the script, we can add in something called floor mesh Render, oops. And we are going to change the color of the floor material. And we're just gonna say that is gonna be equal to a wind material that we create. I'm going to copy this and come down here. And, and, and when it fails, we're gonna make it a lose material. Okay, but we do need to define what those are. So up at the very top under agent here, need to do a serialize field that this is going to be private and we are going to be looking for whatever the wind material is so we're going to be asking for a wind material 
you can copy that because we're going to do the same thing except for we're going to be also looking for a lose material and one more thing copy that bring down to the bottom is we need to define what that mesh renderer is so mesh renderer floor mesh renderer okay so what does this serialized field mean go ahead and save that and i will show you by switching over to unity okay clicking on the agent and we can look into our script now we have all of a sudden these new fields which is the wind material lose material and the floor mesh render which are the things that we just created and they're looking for nothing is selected right now so we need to add some things in so floor mesh renderer is looking for what needs to change color. So I'm going to change the platform, drag that into floor mesh render. Now I need to create a win and a lose material. So in the materials uh, folder, we are going to create a new material. We're gonna call this one win material. And win material, let's go ahead and make this green. Do the same thing, we're gonna create a new material. This one's gonna be called lose material. And lose material is going to be red. So clicking on the agent again, we can drag those in. So win material goes with win material, lose material goes with lose material. One other thing, this boundary on the bottom um, makes it look a little uh, rough so we can under mesh renderer uncheck this and it disappears but it, we can still use it as the uh, boundary okay so let me show you what we just did here if you go ahead and hit play again moving around once you hit the goal the platform turns green so you can see when it succeeds and if you fall off the platform it resets and it'll be red to say hey you failed so cool way just to see it. And that will be it for the heuristics. Okay, so we were able to um, do this for heuristics. So moving around with the keyboard, but what our ultimate goal is, is that the computer learns how to do this. So we need to start putting in the logic for the computer to move things, uh, move the agent around. Okay, so right under heuristics, I'm gonna add this in. So we are going to be doing public override void, and we are going to be, um, let me see which ones, we are gonna be collecting observations from the environment. So now I need to know where's the agent and where's the goal, because those are gonna be my inputs to moving things around. So, collect observations, passing it in vector, sensor, sensors, that sensor. Okay, so we are collecting observations, so we need to add those in. So first thing we need to know, we need to know the transform dot local position. I need to know where the agent is on the platform, which is going to be a new vector. Uh, oh, sorry, this is going to be, disregard that for a second. Um, so in here, it's going to be uh, adding that observation. So it's going to be sensor dot add observation. And here is where we add the transform dot local position. Now that gives us the position of the agent, but we do need to know where is the uh, goal object. So up at the top, just go ahead and copy one of these for serialized field, but we're going to change it to transform. And we are going to be looking for the, I'm going to call it goal transform. This is going to be the position of the goal object. Under initialize, not only do I want to initialize where the uh, agent is, but I also want to initialize where the goal 
transform is. And this is instead of negative 2.5, it's going to be positive 2.5. I'm just going to copy this because the on episode begin is going to need the same thing. So initializing the transform position of the goal object. Down on collecting observations, I'm going to copy uh, what we have here and paste it below. And instead of the transform position, I'm, it's going to be the goal transform position. So passing in the location of the agent and the location of the goal. Now, in order for this to work, we do need to go back to Unity, click on the agent, and we need to go to behavior parameters because we no longer have a vector space of three. We have a vector space of six because we have two positions that we are passing in, one for the agent and one for the goal, which each have three position values. Okay, back to the script. We are collecting those observations and that is gonna be passed and used to figure out which way uh, it needs to move around. Looking at that, I believe that is everything we need. So you can go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and see if we can run it. Um, let me just make sure we have everything set, which we do. Okay, so uh, let's attempt to run it. Let's see if we have anything wrong. I'm in the virtual environment, so if you accidentally exited out of the command line or whatever, go back and redo your virtual environment. Um, before I run this, we do need a configuration file. So go to your internet, navigate to the uh, ML agents package on GitHub, go to docs, and then there's a learning environment, create new. So this just shows you how you can create a new environment but the one thing that I want to get out of it is in the training environment, these are all the hyperparameters that you can set. And these are just some defaults that you can use. Um, so I'm going to use that. In our project, so these are all the things within the project, I'm going to create a new folder called config. It's for the configuration file. Inside of there, I'm going to create a new text document called... Um, move agent dot yaml y a m l uh, i was hoping this would change it but it did not so let me just call this move agent open it up if it doesn't let you save it like that you can do a save as change it from a text document to all files and then make this move agent dot yaml it will save you can close that and now you can delete that initial text document so we have this yaml file called move agent inside of there go ahead and paste everything you just copied from that github page and we can run through what some of these are but this is just establishing the learning rate and the max steps that you want to take and uh, how often you're reporting the summary all that sort of stuff okay Going back to your command prompt, we're going to try and run the training environment. So ML agents dash learn. This is how you initialize the learning environment. We are going to run it with those configuration parameters. So config dash move agent dot yaml. So using that configuration file, dash dash run dash id so we're giving it a run id so we can identify it um, i'm just going to call it test one and you can go ahead and run it if it works correctly you will see the unity screen pop up on here it does and it'll say it's listening okay so it's listening you can come back here and you can hit play Okay, we do have an error. Uh, the variable goal transform has not been assigned. All right, so we need to stop that. We need to go back here and figure out. All right, we do have goal transform there. Uh, we, uh, we have not, okay, so click on the agent. 
I know what I did wrong now. We have not added what the goal is. So right here where it says none, we have not told it what the goal really is. So drag goal into there and hopefully that will take care of it. Uh, make sure that it's still listening, it's not. So we're gonna have to rerun that command. Um, we already created a test folder. So in my projects, uh, under results, there's already a test one just because it started and ended already. If you just delete that, you can use the same name. You can also change the name if you want to, or you can hit resume, uh, put in resume, and it will continue off of that. But I'm just going to delete it and start over. Okay, it is listening. Okay, um, yep, so our, and one other thing I forgot, sorry. Okay, under config, we need to open up that YAML file. Um, this was the default, was rollerball. We need to change this to move agent because that is what we're trying to do here. Um, and that's the name of our uh, script. So hopefully that will be the last thing. And hopefully it didn't create another test file. So under results, it did create a test one. I'm going to delete it and start over. Okay, Unity's up. Listening. Hopefully this one works now. Okay, there we go. So the agent's ra doing random movements to try to figure out what it should be doing. It's getting closer to the ball, closer, closer, and it fell off. Okay, it keeps falling off. So like I said, red is it's getting punished because it's not doing the right thing. Um, ooh, it hit it, so it's slowly trying to figure it out. I'm gonna stop that because I'm gonna show you one other thing that you can do to speed up this training. Um, in the bottom left here, I'm gonna create an empty object. I'm going to call this environment. And I'm going to take boundary, goal, agent, and platform and move them inside of environment. Now, if I click into assets with all of our folders here, I'm going to move the environment into the assets. And then I'm just going to delete it uh, from the left. Now, I have this template right here that I can just drag into the left side and what's cool is I can actually copy it. So just do a control C, control V. And now I have two of the same environments and just kind of space those out a little bit. I'm going to zoom out. And you can just duplicate the environments and they're all going to run in parallel. Now, obviously, it depends on how much processing you have, how many of these you can do. I'm just going to copy these a few times and... Um, me add yeah that should be good for now okay now i do need to readjust the camera because obviously we need to zoom out so taking this we can zoom out to try to see all of them that should be good okay i am going to change the run id of this one to test two and we will run it okay so now you can see all of them are running at the same time now it is a little laggier obviously because it's a lot more processing a lot more uh video rendering uh but the agent will agents will train faster doing it this way um and i'm hoping one of them hits the ball fairly soon you do have to be careful of what you are rewarding the agent for for instance if you're rewarding it for you know, a small reward for not falling off the platform, it's going to optimize to not wanting to move. Uh, it's just going to move very slightly around in a circle. So, yeah, you do need to be careful of how you are uh, rewarding it. I'm actually really surprised none of them hit it yet, but they'll slowly get there. If you do want this to speed up a little, you can uh, turn off the camera. Um, by going to camera and then unchecking the camera right here. It's just gonna freeze here, but it'll still be training in the background. 
Um, I do have something else I can show you. So while that's training, if you open up another command prompt, and then you need to navigate back to your virtual environment. So let me just find my virtual environment. Navigate back there. Okay. And activate it. So virtual environment, scripts, activate. We're going to be using TensorBoard. And I'm going to do dash dash log dir equals results run that all right and it's saying it's being put to localhost 6006 opening up your browser you can go to tensorboard and if you click on test 2 which is the one that we're on right now you can see the reward over time uh you can expand it you can resize it whatever but every time this outputs a new step, it will put the value on here. And you can refresh at the top to see um, if it's made any progress. What you should be seeing is this approaching one as it gets better and better at um, completing the task. Uh, opening the wrong window here. Okay, so we do have another step. Let me, there we go. You can zoom out. Okay, you can see it is, definitely going up right so it's approaching zero and hopefully it's approaching one um, as it starts really learning what to do and you can see uh, the episode length right now it's kind of flat but you should see the episode length start to go down as well there's a whole bunch of information here that you can see but for now i am going to pause the video until um the model gets trained a little better and then I'll come back and show you how you can add the um, network or the model into the unity so um, I will be right back okay so coming back you can see on my screen our agent has learned how to reach the goal so I'm going to actually stop the training here and what I'm gonna show you is how to add that uh, model into uh, the agent. So if I go here under assets, I'm just going to actually create a new folder and I'm gonna call it uh, models. Okay. And I'm going to open up uh, the file with the test. So if you're in your project folder, it's under results and you can see test two. And this actually may be waiting for it to save. So it just may take a second. Okay, here we go. So the Onyx file right here is where the model is saved. So um, go ahead, I'm just going to copy this model. I'm going to go back to the project folder. Under assets, you can find that models folder that we just created. I'm just gonna paste it right in there. Going back to Unity. Okay, here's the, here's the important thing that you need to know when using environments though. So when you're in multi or duplicating this, you can't just click on one environment because it's only gonna change that single one. So what you have to do is go under assets and you have to open up that environment and this will save the changes for all of them. Okay, so clicking on the agent, under behavior parameters, there uh, is going to be a slot for a model. So if you open up models and you move the uh, move agent model I think that's what I just called it let me uh, let me go back here to uh, assets models I'm actually going to call this uh, test 2 just to keep track of it I'm going to change this one as well okay so we're going to be using the test2 model. So go ahead and drag the test2 model into the uh, model slot right there. And now instead of behavior type as default, we're gonna do inference only. You can go ahead and save that and then go back to the original environment by hitting that back button. And now when you run this, it's going to be using the model to do inference instead of training it. So it's going to take what it's learned and it's just going to apply it. So you can see 
all of them are starting to go towards the goal. So this was just a very simple move to the goal kind of problem. Um, from here, we're going to expand this. So the ultimate thing that we're trying to get after is we're going to try to make the agent learn how to hit a button, um, move some things within the environment so that it can get to the goal and maybe the goal will be moving around as well. So just a whole bunch of different steps to um, try to reach this goal rather than just it's stationary and it's always in the same spot. So stay tuned for that. The next video, we're definitely going to dive into how do we start randomizing where things spawn and how do maybe we'll add the button in. Um, so stay tuned and thanks for joining. If you got anything out of this and you want to see those other videos, definitely like the uh, page and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks.